the biggest one I think everybody was looking forward to was the Colorado Buffs spring game. Your new head coach and prime Deion Sanders there. Uh, he has brought in a ton of excitement. He's brought in a ton of just – I don't even know if swagger is the appropriate word for this because he – I don't know if that would be disrespectful to anything, but it seems like he's brought a lot of swagger to this Colorado team. And the, the spring game, there was over 40,000 people there. It looked like it was completely sold out. There was snow. It was this beautiful scenery. They're excited. He's out there dancing, having a good time. He's in his cowboy hat like he was um, at Jackson State and just looking like a, having a grand old time. And everybody was loose. Everybody was having fun. He did interview on the side and, you know, was having a grand old time. But the question for this Colorado team coming in was how many recruits necessarily were they going to bring in? Because he said right when he got there, hey, a lot of you are going to be looking for a new home. A lot of you are going to have to figure out where you're going to go because we're bringing in so-and-so. I am going to go out and get the best players here. You guys did not perform the way that you needed to. So we're going to get new guys. And they brought in a ton of transfers, some from his previous teams, from his previous team. But regardless, a lot of transfers came in. He had Coach Sean Lewis come in. He was a head coach at Kent State for a few, uh, for about four years, offensive coordinator at Syracuse, um, at Bowling Green as well. He was a tight ends coach at Eastern Illinois University. He played at Wisconsin. He is from the suburb area of Illinois and Chicago. And to leave his head coaching job, to go be an offensive coordinator at Colorado with Deion Sanders is huge. And he brought his offensive line coach, Coach O'Boyle, as well who I've almost had on this podcast, which we'll, hopefully we'll get him on um, eventually as the summer moves on. To bring those guys in, the curious thing was, with their schedule, how are they going to look in the spring game? How was his son, um, Shadur Sanders, coming in? How is he going to look? Um, uh, you know, are they going to be – not competent is the right word, but with the type of – what kind of offense were they going to bring? Was he going to bring in the Deion Sanders offense that he saw at Jackson State, or was he going to allow Coach Sean Lewis to just kind of do his thing? The, the up temp, what you guys saw at Baylor, that's what he was going to do. Coach Sean Lewis learned it under Coach Babers at Eastern Illinois University. I was even there and helped out spring ball and got to see how that unfolded. Then he went on to Bowling Green. They did the same thing. Syracuse, and he was doing the same thing at Kent State. Now is it 100% the same as Baylor? No, there's some tweaks. There's some different things. Uh not all RPOs. Uh, once in a while, they're going to go full up tempo, but they're not going to. Sometimes they have to stop and do a check with me. So the, the question coming into this was, what kind of energy was going to be brought? Well, the energy factor, check. You've got the check mark for the energy level. What was the team going to look like defensively and offensively? From a defensive perspective, because the offense is really easy to talk about, but the defensive perspective, when they had the microphone on on coach uh, on Prime on Coach Prime. He was yelling, hit the ball, hit them, hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him. And one thing you saw was they all flowed to the football. Colorado was not a good team last year. They were far from anything being relevant. They were far from anything being talked about. No offense to anybody. They just did not play well. And so they they flew to the football. You know, the, you, you saw the number two defense versus number one offense, and you saw number one defense versus number two – number one defense versus number two offense. They flew to the football, and you saw corners and safeties play a lot better. That's – that. Says a lot to Coach Coach Prime. They they flew to the football. Now they still have some things they need to work on. That's some breakdowns in coverage. They gave up some big runs from a defensive line perspective and getting pressure. Um, and it's the and they had to go against their own offense, which is a you know high flying, fast tempo offense. So the defense to me looked like they just flew to the football a lot better. They looked like they were hitting a lot better. They were more physical than they were last year. The offense was exactly what you expected to be. If you just go pop in some Kent State film or just go to YouTube and find Kent State, if you go to YouTube and you type in Syracuse football with Coach Babers, if you go in and type in Baylor offense, you're going to see a lot of similarities, especially the Syracuse stuff, because that's where Coach Lewis was really, he was offense coordinator, co-offensive coordinator there. And that, that type of offense is what you're really – going to see and that's what you saw in the spring game they they as soon as that ball is dead 
if it's a complete pass, the running back gets tackled, whatever it is, they are on the ball and they're snapping the ball within eight to 12 seconds. In the spring time with Eastern Illinois, Coach Babers had a stopwatch and they had to snap the ball that fast. And I remember, I think it was 15 seconds they were getting the ball off and he was irate. It was not something that he was happy with. It was not something that he said, that's not what they're about. So if you go look at those type of offenses, that's exactly what you're going to see. Um, Coach Coach um, Sanders' son looked pretty good. He is a very mobile quarterback, and the way he was throwing the football, he looked confident. He looked like he was understanding the offense because it's not an entirely complex offense. You can't have this huge complex offense if you're going to go up and and you know snap the ball every ten seconds. You you just can't. You know the signals come in quick. You have to re- understand it. You may only get maybe two reads, anything like that. You're not going to get this complex play. Um, it might literally just be an RPO handing the ball off. It might be a play action type of thing. Um, the running back I thought looked extremely well. Uh, Smoke. He's a transfer. One of the many many transfers that they have on offense alone. Offense alone. They have. A quarterback transfer, running back transfer, tight end transfer, right tackle transfer, right guard transfer, left guard transfer, and another wide receiver transfer. And according to their depth chart and who was in the spring game, that is who was starting. That seven transfers starting compared to last year. The number two, quote unquote, because you know the depth chart, this is where we don't want to overreact. They have three as their number twos, quote unquote, transfer. Then they have two more as their third type of string transfer on defense. They have a defensive end that's a transfer, defensive tackle, one of their backers that's a transfer, another backer that's a transfer, their middle linebacker that's a transfer, another backer transfer, free safety transfer, cornerback transfer, and their nickelback. Nine transfers starting, two as their number twos and one as number three. Special teams, they have all but one, all but one. All these guys are transfers that he has brought in. Their backups are guys that were already there. A lot of sophomores, a lot of juniors, some that transferred last year, but they are transfers that he had brought in. And watching that offense with the offensive line trying to learn it, with how the receivers were going, with the quarterback play, it looked fun. It looked explosive. They looked fast. Now, the question is going to be, are they going to be fast as the year goes on? They have a very tough schedule coming up. You know, the things we're taking away from the spring ball is one of the questions we had was can Coach Deion Sanders coach football? He was at Jackson State. There was there's documentary on him on Amazon on Amazon. You guys can go watch. There's a bar stool one out there that we could watch. And the question is, what kind of coach is he? Is he next as a nose coach? You know, what kind of coach is he? And he seems to me like a coach that is a culture building guy. You watch that documentary. On Amazon, he gets on them about cell phones. He gets on them about how they're dressed. He gets on them how they act. You've seen videos. He brought up women that work for them and say, we treat women with the utmost respect. If you disrespect these women today and or during the spring game, he is mic'd up. Go on ESPN. He is mic'd up. And he said, hey, when you come back out here, you put two sleeves on. We don't do it in practice. Why are you doing it in this game? So if, if he's I, – I, he guarantee he knows way more defense than we all do. What kind of coach is he? What kind of team are we going to see? Well, I saw a team that was very motivated in the spring game. Now, you don't want to overreact, of course. But it's nice to see a glimpse of what we're about to find out about this team. So it's very curious, after seeing the spring game, how are they going to compare to their schedule? How are they going to um, handle their schedule? They have an extremely, extremely tough schedule coming up for them. Extremely tough schedule. Um, Having technical difficulties. Here we go. So let's look at Colorado's schedule. How are they going to match up? They have an incredibly tough schedule. Well, they have to go to Texas and open up against um, TCU, who lost in the national championship versus Georgia. And then, you know, Nebraska, who had their spring game the same day. Uh, Colorado State, who they should be able to be, but then you have Oregon, USC, Arizona State, Stanford, UCLA, Oregon State, Arizona, Washington State, and Utah. Like your toughest, your your non-conference game is Nebraska and TCU. 
Now Nebraska's not being the same. Nebraska, TCU, you know they're doing they're they're turning a turning a corner there. So can this offense hold up? Can the players hold up? Is the culture and the way they're going to be motivated to play going to hold them up in the schedule that they're about to embark on? Now, not every team's going to be the toughest of the tough, but you know, Oregon's always tough. USC coming in with Caleb Williams. Arizona State's going to have a new coach. So, you know, there's a possibility there. Stanford, new coach. We know what UCLA and Chip Kelly's about. Oregon State surprised everybody last year and they're they're starting to turn a corner. Arizona beat some teams last year. Washington State has been consistent since Mike Leach was there and even when he left. And then Utah's won the Pac-12 for two years in a row. So I think they can make some noise after seeing their spring game and how they can combat with their offense and their defense and how Coach Prime is going to coach them and kind of what we're seeing from that spring game. But you never want to overreact to the spring game, of course. But it is cool to see how their how the offense looked. You know, was it going to be more of what Coach Prime wants? Is it, was it going to be more of um, what Coach Sean Lewis was going to do? But, you know, it's it's really cool to see uh, that it was going to be Sean Lewis's offense that we were able to see. And um, so I, it's just going to be curious to see how Colorado is going to combat with their schedule and with their team and the type of offense they're going to be running.